Hello. In this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the stereochemistry of the diels alder reaction, but now we're going to talk about something called the endo rule. Okay. And uh, to highlight what the endo rule is, actually, if you, you watch the the previous video, which is about the transition state of the diels alder reaction, uh, that video ended with just the, the faintest hint of what the endo, endo rule is. Um, and I'm going to try to represent it to you here. That from a stereochemical standpoint, uh, this reaction follows a certain stereochemical pathway uh, because the you know the transition state demands it, and you know the this carbon atom here and it has to become this carbon atom over here. And because we have uh, a cis dienophile, we have to have a cis diene. Well, that's, or I'm sorry, a cis product. Well, that cis product can actually happen with one of two, as one of two diastereomers. And this one on, that I've just drawn is called the endo diastereomer because the, the nitriles or whatever functional group these are are pointing down. They're actually like under. You know, if you think about endoskeleton, endo means in, inside. Well, there's also uh, a possibility for you to get something called exo, where the uh, nitriles are up uh, relative to the bridgehead. Uh, it's called exo, so it's just like they're on the outside. Uh, and I'm going to take just a quick moment and draw the... Oops, and draw the uh, top-down view of these to just get a different. Oops, I want to move this carbon atom so it looks like. Just draw the top-down view of the endo and exo products to give you a different way of, of thinking about them. Because I recognize that some people uh, prefer to look at their bicyclic structures this way. Here's the endo on the left, and let me just change the relative stereochemistry. There's the exo. Uh, it turns out uh, that the, the endo product is the kinetic product, and the exo product is the thermodynamic product. Um, the, the exo product is actually a little bit more stable, and it might, uh, I'm going to change my endo just a little bit here, right? And it might actually surprise you that the exo product is, is uh, less stable um, or more stable, but here we go. Right. What makes the exo product less stable or more stable is that these nitrile groups are actually pointing away from from other parts of the molecule, um, there's not a lot of steric hindrance. So even though there's, even though there's there's uh, uh, hydrogens on this, you know, on this position, uh, there there's a lot of there's a lot of daylight in there. Um, and, and even though it looks like the hydrogen atoms on this other side of the bicyclic system are far away, they're actually closer together than than drawn. So the exo product is the thermodynamic product, but the endo product is the kinetic product, which means we can control the outcome of this reaction based on temperature. Because the temperature required to reach the thermodynamic product is ridiculously high. Sometimes, you know, Sometimes the uh, you know, sometimes the, the kinetic product occurs around a hundred degrees Celsius. The thermodynamic product requires like greater than two or three hundred degrees Celsius. And so, for all practical purposes, we generally think about the endo product as the major. I want to draw a box around my endo product here. 
just consider the endo product to be the major product. Move my text labels in there. Right. Because the types of uh, types of conditions required to get to the thermodynamic pro project are uh, mm, sort of outrageous. Okay. So now let's talk about why the endo product is the kinetic product. Uh, the kinetic product needs to have a needs to have a faster reaction, uh, which means that the activation energy needs to be lower. Uh, so something about this transition state going into the endo product needs to be more stable or lower energy. Uh, and again, we're kind of only really just projecting what we think this transition state might look like, but here we go. Um, I'm going to draw for you the... I'm going to actually fill in the full structure of the nitriles. This is important, actually, um, because these nitriles are, in fact, conjugated into the... Uh, one alkene in the dienophile. Like in the last video, uh, this is a reaction between the homo of the diene and the lumo of the dienophile. And the lumo of the dienophile looks a little different when it's got conjugated groups in it. Because this is actually six conjugated atoms. And so the LUMO of the dienophile actually has pi bonds or p orbitals at all six spots. It still has symmetry kind of that matches the diene uh, symmetry. And so now we can draw my dad and Dosh dash line. You get uh, overlap where the new sigma bonds are going to form, but you also get some overlap between the carbon atoms in the nitrile and the uh, back carbon atoms in the, the diene. And so let me draw this another way that sometimes works out. I'm going to try to think about looking at the uh, diene side on. And in this case, I, I'm not going to draw in the, the pi bonds because it's going to get a little, it's going to get a little crowded here. Uh, they don't like this. Give me a moment. I actually want this. I just need it to be... It be stretched. I don't want my orbitals sitting on top of each other. And they're still going to be sitting on top of each other. So let's drag that back this way a little bit. I apologize. I needed to, I'm trying to, to get a certain level of orbital arrangements here. Right. So here is our diene kind of looking at its side on. And let's draw the dienophile kind of in a similar uh, conformation. Best as possible. Actually, just like the, uh, the, just like the, just like on the diene, I'm not going to draw in any of the pi bonds on the, the dienophile because I want to be able to see what the orbitals look like. I'm going to have to, to stretch this out as well. Let's see, so I need this, this. This looks like this. This. And I'm going to stretch these things. I'll stretch this. They're not overlapping each other. Okay. So here finally is a side on, oops, whoa, view of the, the, the approach.
and you can kind of get a, a better picture of the overlap that occurs between the the tucked under type positions and the between the diene and the dienophile. This uh, additional orbital overlap in the tucked under arrangement uh, this additional orbital overlap is what stabilizes the transition state leading to endo now I have this uh, this only really matters when there's stereochemistry in the diene as well. And so uh, the most common case is when you have a cyclic diene and you get a, you can get a, you know, let's, let's actually do a different one. Let's, let's do, uh, let's do the aldehyde CHO. You can do the, you know, with the, when you have a cyclic diene, you have inherent stereochemistry in the and you have an inherent stereochemistry in the, the diene and you can get this endo product to predominate. Um, Apologize for stumbling over my words here. I'm trying to make sure that I draw these things correctly. I'm going to actually, just go up here and, and grab a hold of this endo structure and copy it. Remove the, the hydrogens. This tucked under arrangement leads to additional orbital overlap. That additional orbital overlap generates the additional stability in the transition state leading to uh, leading to the uh, endo product being favored. Uh, this arrangement also explains why um, in a case where you have you know maybe not a, maybe not a, a cyclic diene, but a an acyclic diene, but there's going to be some stereochemistry here. You know, you've, we predicted in the, or I shared in the previous video that I knew that my uh, groups on the dienophile were going to tuck under, and they're going to end up cis to the groups on the. Uh, oops. Just methyl, methyl, aldehyde, aldehyde. Uh, they're going to end up cis to the um, other, to the other endo groups. And some people will generalize this further to call this the out endo cis rule. So groups that are going to end up endo, groups that are facing outward on the diene. Are going to end up cis to each other in the product. This concludes the the sequence of videos on the stereochemistry of the di uh, or of the Diels Alder reaction. I have uh, a couple more videos planned. I want to talk about alkynes as a dienophile. I want to talk about regiochemical outcomes, and then I want to talk about uh, synthesis. Uh, you know, if you have a a product that looks like it was made from a Diels Alder reaction, how can you predict? what diene and diene oil might have been used. Thank you for watching.